hello uh, welcome for the next bit from the seventh chapter that is ndp architecture here you are going to study the numeric data processor 8087 architecture in detail as you can see in the block diagram shown here the numeric data processor architecture it can be divided into two main parts that is control unit and numeric execution unit in the control unit we have to concentrate on the control word status word and in the numeric execution unit we have to learn about the tag word and register stack in more detail let us first have a brief overview about this block diagram architecture as you can see on the left hand side part that is in the control unit of this block diagram the two registers or words control register or control word in other uh, words the control word status word these are the two 16 bit words their working we'll see in more details in the further slides it has got a data bus buffer it has an addressing and bus tracking block and it has got exception pointers next the operand skew has been shown here the basic fundamental is whenever the microprocessor wants to execute a program and if the 8087 math coprocessor is used in the architecture or in the system then such a program will have 68 more, more instructions apart from the 8086 microprocessors instructions so those 68 instructions they will be belonging to the 8087 math coprocessor only that means this math coprocessor is supposed to execute any instruction in the program which is belonging to these 60, 68 instructions that means in the given instructions of the program if the instruction is preceded with the letter F please remember if any instruction which is preceded with the letter F it is called as an escape instruction ESC instruction and such an instruction is supposed to be executed by 8087 math coprocessor so when such instructions are identified those instructions will be stored in this operands queue we know that there is an instruction queue in 8086 similar to that here is an operands queue available in 8087 math coprocessor then in the numeric execution unit on the right hand side here we can see there are two main internal buses the exponent bus and the fraction bus or also called as mantissa bus or the significant bus you can see the size of exponent bus is 16 bit and the size of fraction bus that is mantissa bus is 64 bits so in all the total of these two buses is it comes out to be 80 we know that every data that is stored in the 8087 every number that is stored in the 8087 registers will be of size 80 bits we have seen that in the previous discussions of data types so whenever any kind of number is to be stored or is to be processed that input number can be of various sizes like 24 bits 53 bits 64 bits etc etc 
but when such number has to be stored within or inside the 8087 it converts such number into an 80 bit number to be stored in one of these registers that is called as a register stack so please remember total size of exponent bus and fraction bus in the numeric execution unit is 80 bits inside this numeric execution unit block there are various blocks such as exponent module which takes care of the number that is biased exponent part of your given input number it has got a programmable shifter arithmetic module and temporary registers it has got a tag word and it has got a register stack so as I said the exponent module is responsible for getting the biased exponent from the given input number and the remaining blocks they will be responsible for getting the mantissa part or the significant part of the given input number and they are also responsible for performing various arithmetic operations that are required to be performed on those numbers now 8087 we have seen it has got various data types similarly 8087 it has its own instruction set having 68 different instructions which can perform the instructions such as arithmetic logical data transfer and trigonometric instructions this type of instructions they can perform so let us go into more detail about the block diagram architecture of 8087 as shown in the previous block diagram we can see that the block diagram is been divided into two main parts control unit and numeric execution unit right let us consider it first on the control unit the first part of the block diagram let us focus on some details the control unit what it does try to remember the control unit part of your microprocessor 8086 what these control units they do here the control unit it keeps the 8087 operating in synchronization with its host CPU the host CPU can be either 8086 or it can be 8088 so out of these two microprocessors whichever is used with 8087 this control unit will be responsible for the synchronization between these two processors next 8087 instructions are intermixed with CPU instructions in a single instruction stream that means in a given program mix number of instructions will be available some instructions belonging to 8087 some instructions belonging to 8086 so such instructions will be available in every program now the instructions emitted by the CPU that means the CPU if it is generating any instructions this particular control unit of 8087 it determines when an instruction is being fetched that means during the fetch operation this control unit will come to know whether this instruction which is being fetched it is belonging to 8086 or it is belonging to the math coprocessor that is numeric data processor 8087 for that the CPU monitors the data bus in parallel how does this how does the 8087 perform this if the instruction being fetched it is an ESC instruction that means if the instruction is preceded with the letter F 
as I said in the previous discussion then such instruction will be considered to be the instruction of 807 and if such ESC instruction if it is not an ESC instruction then it is supposed to be executed by your normal regular microprocessor 8086 or 8088 so in short the 8087 it takes care of or the control unit of 8087 takes care of identifying the instruction of 8087 then what it does the control unit it maintains an instruction queue which is very much similar to the instruction queue of 8086 so once the instructions are fetched once they are brought from the memory they will be stored in the instruction queue of 8 we know that we know what is the benefit of instruction queue keeping the instructions in the available queue and try to decode and execute them by taking them one by one out from the queue so prior to the execution the instructions will be available in the queue which reduces the time of fetching the instruction from the memory before the execution perform is performed next this control unit what it does it automatically identifies if the CPU is an 8086 or 80186 or it is 8088 or 80188 immediately after it is reset that means whenever 8087 is reset by 8086 or 8088 microprocessor immediately the 8087 understands which microprocessor it is connected to either it is connected to 8086 or it is connected to 8088 it does this automatically how it does it the, it does this by monitoring the bus high enable oblique s7 pin and then it matches its queue length accordingly means what as per the microprocessor to be used it matches its queue length the instruction queue length will be matched with the required microprocessor next by monitoring the CPU's queue status line QS0 and QS1 like these two the control unit it obtains and decodes instruction from the queue in synchronization with the CPU that means by reading the queue status pins QS0 and QS1 the control unit of 8087 it obtains and decodes the instructions accordingly that means from which part of the queue the instruction has to be taken out whether the instruction from the front has to be taken whether the instruction from the subsequent which is in the subsequent in the queue that has to be taken etc is decided and synchronized by the 8087 microprocessor So in the control unit as we have seen some important words or registers are there to be discussed control word and status word let us concentrate on these two words what is the purpose of these two words these are the two 16 bit words right let us start with the first that is status register it is a 16 bit register of 8087 NDP you can see the bits bit names one by one 16 bits are from bit number 0 to bit number 15 bit number 0 to bit number 15 the names of these bits are given here you can see the lowest six bits that is 
bit number sorry lowest five bits that is bit number zero to bit number four these are called as exception flag bits that means whenever an exception has to be masked these bits will be set and if you do not want to mask those exceptions these bits will be reset that is zero exception is nothing but an a condition raised by the external signal from the out of the microprocessor or the 8087 which is dependent on a particular operation done we'll see those exceptions one by one first exception bit that is ie invalid operation what it does it gives the status whether the particular operation is invalid or not what kind of operations are called as invalid operations suppose the stack overflows for example this overflow is different from the stack overflow we are talking about the invalid operations some of the operations are called as invalid operations for example if the stack overflows if the stack underflows such particular operations they are called as invalid operations so whenever such operations are carried out then this exception flag bit will be set to indicate that an invalid operation has been performed next bit is first bit de that is denormalized operand we have seen in the data types bit 8087 data types bit we have seen whenever the number has to be stored or has to be handed over to the 8087 for processing for performing the processing whenever such real numbers are to be given to the 8087 the numbers has to be first normalized normalizing is a process in which the decimal point is shifted in such a way that only a single digit one will be coming on to the left side of the decimal point so this process should be carried out before the number has to be processed by 807 and suppose from the multiple operands out of the multiple operands on which 8087 wants to perform operation suppose if any one of the operand is not normalized if any one of the operand out of the multiple operands if any one is not normalized then the denormalized operand de exception is raised that is this bit will be set next bit is ze zero divide for example if any non zero number is by mistake divided by zero then this exception flag bit is set which tells that a divide by zero error has occurred and we cannot divide a number by zero so this exception will be whenever such op operation will be performed this bit will be set ze bit will be set otherwise it will be reset next overflow operation bit number three whenever for any mathematical operation if the result that is generated if it is not able to fit in the destination operand please understand if the result of any arithmetic operation or mathematical operation if this result is not capable of getting stored in the desired destination register then the overflow exception occurs and during that this bit will be set oe bit will be set otherwise this bit will be reset on the contrary underflow if any one of the operand it is not up to the mark for the operation to be performed underflow 
flag or exception will occur that is if the desired operand is not given as input if it is shortened or there is shortage of the size of the operand then the result cannot be generated as a desired output so this will cause the underflow flag or exception to be raised and this underflow ue bit will be set bit number 4 will be set so those are different exception flags next one is precision pe which indicates the precision value of your input number the precision value of the input number can be for short the significant size will be 24 bits for long the significant size will be 53 bits and for temporary real the significant size will be 64 bits so in short the numbers can be called as short single precision double precision etc so this precision will be decided is mentioned by the precision pe fifth bit bit number six is unused which is not used for any purpose bit number seven is ir interrupt request whenever an exception flag is set any of these exception flag is set set and if the interrupt enable mask bit is zero in the control register the control register is another register we are going to study there is a bit called as iem interrupt enable mask if that bit is zero and if here in status register if any of these exception flags are set then the ir is set that is interrupt request bit is set which causes to generate an interrupt to the microprocessor next four bits are there bit number 8 9 10 and 14 c0 c1 c2 and c3 these are called as condition codes what they do they work exactly similar to the cpu flags that is microprocessor flag bits we know that there are various flag bits of 8086 microprocessor they indicate the result of operation that is performed by the microprocessor they give some status about the result of operation so such four condition codes c0 c1 c2 c3 they are responsible for giving the condition codes of 8087 that means out of the various instructions of instruction set such as arithmetic instructions logical instructions then trigonometric instructions data transfer instructions out of these various instructions if a particular operation is carried out its condition will be given by the condition codes c0 c1 c2 and c3 bits those four bits they work together to show the status of the operation that is carried out by the 8087 next bit number 11 12 and 13 they are called as or they together give the top of the stack pointer that means they will tell which register out of the register stack please understand there is a register stack we have seen in the numeric execution unit there is a register stack in the numeric execution unit eight registers are there eight registers are there in the register stack they are having the numbers from 0 to 7 those 8 registers in the register stack have numbers from 0 to 7 
so at any instance any one register out of those eight registers will be considered as the top of the stack pointer that means the top of the stack address will be available with any one of these registers so that registers binary equivalent number is stored in these three bits top top of the stack pointer bits 11 12 and 13 three bits means three different combinations those can be from 0 0 0 to 1 1 1 that means from in decimal 0 to 7 such eight different values can be indicated by these three bits so depending on their value depending on their value the 8087 understands the status that is which register in the register stack that is whether register 0 or register 1 or register 2 or register 3 or register 4 or register 5 or register 6 or register 7 which register is currently being working as top of the stack this information will be given by top bits top of the stack bits 11 12 and 13 bits lastly the most significant bit b bit called as busy neu busy or idle bit what it does it tells that currently the numeric extension sorry numeric execution unit of 8087 ndp is busy for performing a particular mathematical operation that means if bit number 15 msb if it is set that is 1 it indicates that 8087 is busy and if it is 0 it indicates that 8087 is idle currently not doing any mathematical operation so this status register what it does it gives the status of the 8087 working which is a 16 bit register I hope you understood the meaning of each and every bit of the status register let us go ahead for the another register or another word in the control unit that is control register again this is a 16 bit register as shown the exception flag bits are exactly same as that of available in the previous status register their working and meaning and names are one and same from bit number 0 to bit number 5 that is bit number 0 is invalid operation bit number 1 is denormalized bit number 2 is 0 divide bit 3 is overflow bit 4 is underflow and bit 5 is precision now let us discuss about remaining bits of the control word control word it controls the operations by setting or resetting certain bits in this word let us see the remaining bits remaining bits that is bit number 8 9 bit number 10 and 11 they work in pairs bit number 10 11 they work in pair bit number 8 9 they work in pair remaining bits in the dark gray color they are reserved some of the bits here can be used as infinity control IC please remember some of the bit in the reserve control can be used as infinity control that is IC and some of the bit such as this it can be called as IEM interrupt enable mask in the reserve category IEM interrupt enable mask IC infinity control the control on the infinity we know that the on the number line there is infinity value this can it can be either positive infinity or negative infinity but let us discuss the working of the 
actual given bits bit number 10 11 in pair two bits four possible combinations these four possible combinations if bit number 11 and 10 are 0 0 it indicates that to the nearest or even rounding off has to be done means these two bits basically they are for rounding control the 8087 has to decide about the rounding of the particular value if these two bits are 0 0 then the rounding has to be done to the nearest whole number or to the nearest even value rounding will be done next if the bits are 0 and 1 0 1 then the rounding has to be done in the downward direction that is whichever is the previous whole number the number will be rounded we are currently talking about the floating point fraction values and those fraction values they needed they are needed to be rounded up rounding control bit number 10 and 11 are doing the job of rounding these numbers four possible combinations four different meanings we have seen 0 0 is rounding to the nearest number or rounding to the very next even number 0 1 is for rounding in the downward direction for example if 3.4 is there its roundup will be 3 next is 1 0 is for in the upward direction rounding in the upward direction if the number is 3.4 the rounding will be done as 4 the next value after 3 and if there are uh, bit combination is 1 1 truncate the result truncate is to concatenate or join or exclude the bits from the result for performing the rounding up that means if I am having if you are having multiple digits in the day after decimal point round them up truncate them to a single digit for example 3.245 instead of 245 you can say 3.25 likewise so multiple digits are truncated so that is the meaning of rounding control bit number 11 and 10 next bit number 8 and 9 precision control we have seen precision bit is there precision control can be done by the programmer to indicate the precision value of the given input number already we have discussed in the real data type there is a data type called as a real data type in the 807 data type formats that real data type again can have three different types we have seen short real long real and temporary real these three different types we have seen we have also studied that the short real will be having the mantissa part or significant part of 24 bits the long real is having the mantissa that is significant part of 53 bits and the temporary real it is having the mantis or significant of is of 64 bit size so that is nothing but it is mentioned or it can be controlled here if bit number 89 are 00, zero then the precision bits will be 24 bits so it indicates that the number has to be a short real number bit combination 0 1 is reserved bit combination 0 1 is reserved if it is 1 0 you have to understand that 53 bits of mantissa has to be used that means the number should be stored as a long precision sorry long short or long real number and if the bits are 1 1 then the mantissa should be of 64 bits that is the number is supposed to be a temporary real number so mainly rounding control and precision control these two bits these two blocks their meaning exception masks their meaning is again one and same we can control the exception 
mask to be done that means by setting or resetting these bits either you can mask these exceptions or unmask these exceptions so that was all about the control register of or control word of 8087 NDP architecture so so far we have seen from the block diagram or we have covered the control word register and status word register the data bus buffer it is just required to be as a mediator between 8087 and the external world whatever data has to be taken as input it should be taken from the data bus through the data bus buffer and whatever output has to be sent it has to be sent from the data bus through the data bus buffer status and address bits will be sent out or received on from these two blocks so that was all about the control unit okay that was all about the control unit let us now concentrate on the numeric execution unit in short we have seen exponent bus fraction bus are the parts exponent module responsible for getting the exponent biased exponent micro code control unit internal micro operations it will be responsible for that whenever the new instructions are arrived the micro code control unit is responsible for performing the those operations related to the micro operations programmable shifter sometimes the numbers they may require to be shifted to left or right for performing the multiplication or division we have seen left shifting or right shifting what do you mean by left and right shifting if you left shift the number by one the number is multiplied by two and if the number is right shifted by one the number is divided by two so that a thing can be required which is achieved by programmable shifter arithmetic module responsible for performing arithmetic operations temporary registers some registers which are used to store the temporary operands of the calculations and the results will be also they can be stored in these temporary registers now we have to focus on the tag word and register stack finally you can see the register stack has got the registers which are of size 80 bits means there are eight registers ranging from register 0 to register 7 those eight registers their sizes are each register is of 80 bits please remember why these registers are of size 80 bits because we have seen any number that will be given as input to the 807 math coprocessor internally it will be stored in a 80 bit format in a 80 bit format and for that the register sum given of 80 bit size please understand whenever you want to give any input number suppose i want to give a number in the short real format internally the 807 will convert that short real number into a 80 bit 80 bit number for a temporary purpose during calculations then it will perform the calculations and when it want to generate the result it will again convert that 80 bit number into a short real sized result conversion will be done as per the requirement of the user if my requirement is my number should be of 64 bits then this 80 bit result will be converted into a 64 bit and then it will be handed over to the external world as output and when i want to give a 64 bit as input 64 bit as input number 807 will convert this number into 80 bit and then it will store in these registers for performing calculations and after the calculations are performed and when the result has to be returned back 
that is output has to be generate generated same 64 bit number will be or the 80 bit number is converted into 64 bit so we'll see this register stack in detail in the further slides tag words are there total eight tag words that means eight registers each register is of size two bits only please understand in the tag word there are eight registers each register it is of size two bits only we'll see the tag register as well in the further slides so after learning the status register control register that was the control unit part of the architecture now let us focus on the next part of the block diagram that is numeric execution unit see what it does the name itself suggests it is responsible to execute all the coprocessor instructions that involve the register stack which kind of instructions it will execute arithmetic instructions logical instructions transcendental which includes the trigonometric and executional instructions constants data transfer instructions etc so these different types of instructions which are belonging to 8087 those are actually executed by the numeric execution unit NEU control unit it is responsible for what it is responsible to perform the interaction with the external world but numeric execution unit it is responsible for performing internal operations mathematical operations so during these operations what what does it need which different registers it uses it has temporary register programmable shifter arithmetic module micro code control unit etc so using these different registers and modules it performs the operations on the numbers now the 84 bit wide data path is available in the numeric execution unit in which out of the 84 bits data path 64 bit fractions 15 bit exponent and 1 bit is for sign it is reserved so in all the data path of any use internally is of 64 bits wide this allows the internal operand transfers to be performed at high speeds because you want to perform the internal operation very fastly so that the results should be generated very fastly the internal data path provided is of 84 bits it is only for internal data path size is 84 bits but for the external data path or external operations 80 bits size will be used in which 16 bits is for exponent and 64 bits is for fraction or mandisa only two parts are there for the buses next when the NEU it begins executing an instruction it activates the 8087 busy signal which indicates that 8087 it is busy for performing any mathematical operation means NEU is responsible to generate the busy signal to in indicate the external world that currently 8087 is busy it is not idle this signal it can be considered as very much similar to the cpu's wait instruction that is 8086 wait instruction and to re-synchronize both processors when a new has completed its current instruction the meaning is suppose any you has currently executed is currently executing its instruction busy signal will be generated on the other hand if 8086 it wants to send the 
or execute the wait instruction during that time 8086 will be when the 8086 is executing wait instruction during that time if the 8087 it finishes its current instruction then 8087 should wait until the current wait instruction of 8086 is finished that means there should be the resynchronization that should occur between the two processors and for that the NEU is responsible to take care of this thing next the various registers in the NEU that are in included are stack registers then tag register exception pointers etc some of the instructions are available to perform data transferring between coprocessor and AX register that is accumulator of microprocessor they say that there are some instructions which are available that can be used to transfer the data between the 8087 and directly to the accumulator of 8086 microprocessor so after learning the basics of numeric execution unit now we have to focus as I said on two different blocks stack registers that is a stack of registers and a tag register two registers you have to focus on tag register as I said it is a 16 bit register it has got eight different tags it has got eight different tags tag 0 till tag 7 total 8 tag registers are there each tag is of 2 bits of size every tag here is of size 2 bits which can have 0 0 0 1 1 0 or 1 1 4 different combinations each tag can have either of any one of these four combinations at any instance they have given the meaning of the four different combinations of the tag bits that means tag 0 it can have any one of these four combinations at any instance tag 1 it can have any one of these four combinations and so on up to tag 7 so looking at those combinations in the tag bits we have to understand the meaning of it what did it say if the tag bits are 0 0 if the two tag bits are 0 0 it indicates that the currently valid operation or valid number is available if the tag num tag bits are 0 1 then it indicates that indicates that currently 0 is available if the tag bits are 10 it indicates that invalid number is available and if the tag bits are 11 it indicates that the currently register is empty four values sorry two values to indicate the four different tag status valid zero invalid or empty tag register it is used to indicate the contents of each register in the stack that means out of the eight stacks in the stack in the stack register every tag is every register in the register stack it is having its corresponding tag bits that means register 0 in regi register stack in register stack register 0 will be having tag 0 associate associated with it register 1 in the register stack will be having tag 1 associated with it with it so looking at the tag bits we have to understand the status of the registers in the register stack that is if any register is having valid value 
if it is having zero value if it is having invalid value or if it is empty next as i said there are total eight tags tag 0 to tag 7 and each tag it uses two bits to represent the value so in all the tag register is of 16 bits we'll see again in the diagram block diagram where the tag word or register is located you can see the tag word is located here it is having total eight tags this tag zero tag is representing or it is belonging to register zero tag one is belonging to register one tag two is belonging to register two and so on and so on so that was all about the tag word of the 8087's numeric execution unit let us discuss about the next register that is register stack the stack of 8 registers is available this stack of 8 registers will be having total 8 registers in it each of these registers will be of size 80 bits for storing the 80 bit numeric data and those registers are available for the programmer that means programmer it can use or he can or she can use these registers in the program for storing the 80 bit values as the name says that it is a register register stack so it follows the stacks last in first out lifo structure that means the element or the number that enters last into the this register array that will be the one which will be coming out first from that array so it is called as a register stack next current top of the stack is called as st0 okay st0 stack top of 0 current top of the stack is st0 or simply it can be called as st that means by default zeroth register is considered to be top of the stack zeroth register will be considered to be top of the stack now this stack it will be following the circular stack structure means whenever the stack is full that is when the seventh register is full then the next value will be written into the zeroth register by overwriting its previous value that is called as the circular stack structure it follows the circular stack structure where once the stack gets full let us see in the previous diagram that is in the block diagram here you can see if suppose the values are pushed one by one like in the stack uh, register 0 then on register 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 suppose the eighth value is pushed then the eighth value is, will be overwritten in the zeroth register back previous value of register 0 will be overwritten by this new value again the next value will, will be stored in register 1 2 and so on that is circular stack structure which is followed by the stack register of numeric execution in it now this 8087 it has three bits stack pointer to hold the number of the register that is currently the stack top please remember we have seen the three bits that is top bits in the status register here three bits top bits these numbers these bit combinations they will tell which register out of these this stack register register stack is currently the stack top we have seen that already when you initialize when you initialize 
this tag pointer by default it contains triple zero 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 that means register zero is by default the stack top whenever we initialize the stack pointer it contains zero 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 value that means whenever the 8087 starts functioning then it should be initialized and at that time by default the stack pointer it will be containing value 000, which can be seen in the status register also as I said it is a circular stack that is after pushing eight elements if we push the ninth element it will get overwritten on the first element itself circular stack structure is followed now what happens when we push an element and what happens when you pop the pop the element pop the element out from the stack after the first push the stack pointer it is decremented by one after the first push assuming that the addresses they are or the stack address is the last address in the memory and whenever you are pushing the values there is the scope to grow in the negative side that is in the decrementing addresses of the memory so when you perform push operation stack pointer will be decremented by one so previously if the stack pointer was zero 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 and if you want to and if you decrement it by one the stack pointer will become one 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 which indicates that the register stable seven now it will become the st0 that is stack top this is how when you push any value then the next register will become the stack top next register here is after zero because the stack pointer is decremented by one so the register seven will become the stack top and during the pop operation that is when you are deleting the element from out from the stack that is reading the data from the top of the stack stack pointer is incremented by one so again suppose currently the stack pointer was stack top was one 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 and if you pop the element out then the sp will be decremented by one if you decrement the sp by one the sp will become zero 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 that means again register zero it becomes the stack top so that is how the register stack it is maintained in numeric execution unit and eu of 8087 NDP architecture so let us have a brief review about what we have learned in this lecture we have studied the 7.3 NDP architecture bit in which we have studied the block diagram architecture in short this block diagram architecture is it is divided in basically into two parts control unit and numeric execution unit we have studied these two different blocks in detail while learning in detail we have studied the structure of control word how this 16 bit control word is functioning performing its function we have seen the meaning of each and every bit of this control word we have discussed the 16 bit status word we have seen the meaning of 16 bits of status word and their functions then in the numeric execution unit we have studied the overview of the numeric execution unit and after that we have studied in detail about the tag word 16 bit register and about the register stack 16 bit register which is again having eight different registers register 0 to register 7 and in the tag word there are eight different tags tag 0 to tag 7 every register in register stack is of size 80 bits every register in the register stack is of size 80 bits and every tag in the tag word is of size 2 bits so that is all what we have learned in the architecture so I hope 
you understood whatever we have discussed so far in the NDP architecture. If you have got any doubts, you can contact to me, myself, Professor, Professor Avindra Takarikar from SKN Sihagar College of Engineering, Korti Pandarpur. Thank you.